Yes, good afternoon. Sava here from Football Heritage TV. I'll tell you what, it never rains, but it pours. Tottenham Hotspur for the first 10 games of this season. We were swimming along nicely. There was no real injuries. There was no real suspensions. <laughs> now it's just all gone. It's all gone a bit spursy, isn't it? I know people don't like that word, but this club, this luck or lack of. Um, the breaking news yesterday was the news that we were all waiting for. Wanted to push it to one side. Didn't want to believe it. Fingers crossed that it was going to be better than we thought, but it wasn't. Um, Rodrigo Benton calls injury is as bad as people thought. They're talking between 10 to 12 weeks. Sky Sports broke it yesterday quite early on. And it's such a, first of all, let's look at it from a human element. Forget Spurs for the moment. For the, let's think about Benton Court. I mean, what a shame for the lad. A very talented footballer. Just had 10 months out injured. Comes back. Starts getting a few minutes under his belt for Spurs then a lot longer for, for Uruguay. And then in his first start back for Tottenham Hotspur, suffers another horrendous injury, which all in all will make it 13 to 14 months out injured. Uh, what a what a, I feel for him. It's not good for him. Um, it must be frustrating. It must be upsetting. But all we can hope is that he comes back better and stronger. I don't want to go down the route of talking about Matty Cash. It's not what I want to do. People can talk about that all they like. These tackles happen in football. It's not right. It's not nice, but it happened. I want to talk about what does it mean for Tottenham Hotspur now? We are in a position now where James Madison is out injured until the new year. Rodrigo Bentoncourt is out injured until maybe February, March. We've got Eve Basuma, who can't stop getting suspended. You've got Basuma and Papa Saar that are going to the African Cup of Nations in January. And then you've got Lo Celso, who played well the other day, but is injured quite a lot. Hoybier and Skip, the drop-off when those two come into the team. For me, people will disagree with me here. That's fine. For me, the drop-off is huge. They are both very, very average to poor footballers for me that completely can't play the Postacoglu system. What do Spurs do? Now, there's two schools of thought in a situation like this. One is ride through it, get through this storm, get through this pain, and that these players will come back. Madison will be back. Yeah, Basuma and Saar will come back from the African Cup of Nations whenever their teams are knocked out. Benton Core will get fit again. Saar, another one who's injured at the moment. But realistically, and I think this is where we need to act like a big club. We talk about it a lot. Things are changing at Spurs. We've got the new directors of football. We've got the new scouts, the new manager with this ethos. We've got the chief football officer in Scott Munn. Daniel Levy, people are telling me he's going to change. These are the moments. Life is composed of moments and so is football. And this is one of those moments in January now where for me, tell me if you agree, you might disagree, it's absolutely fine, keep it football. For me, this is one of those moments where Daniel Levy needs to do what he doesn't normally do and say, here's X amount of money, go and plug these gaps. Because maybe we could have got through to the end of the season with our midfield options. Now, with these injuries, suspensions, African combinations, I don't know if we can. He needs to put his hand in his pocket. We've always been frugal with money as Spurs. Yes, we've spent money, as people say, but we're one of those that we're always very good at. We spend what comes in. But there are moments in time. There are moments in a football season. There are moments in a football process and a project where you have to look and say, how do we dig deep here? How do we give Postacoglu the best tools available to succeed in his job this year? And for me, that means we need to go into the market. And we need to buy some proper midfielders. I'm not talking about cheap 
throwaway players that come in as cover. I'm talking about speed up that process. Maybe the centre mids that you wanted in January, in in in, um, in in the next summer or the year after. How do we now look at? Can we speed the process up with them? If they're not available in January, can we start looking at other targets? But something has to give. We aren't that squad. We aren't that club that can cope with this. We've witnessed that in the last three games. We can't cope with that. And we've got to get a bigger, bulkier squad. We knew it from January, uh, from the summer. We knew it. Deep down, we all knew it. I think a lot of people glossed over it because of the brilliant start. For me and for many others, that niggle in the back of your mind where you're like, oh, a couple of injuries here, we're in trouble. And now we've got three, four, five, six injuries. They're piling up. Yes, not all of them are guaranteed first-team starters. The likes of Sessegnon, Whiteman, Perisic, or Charleston, they may not be necessarily first 11. But when you look at Bentoncourt, who is first 11, Madison, who is, Saar, who is, Bentoncourt, who is, Adogi keeps picking up knocks. These are first 11 players that somehow we've got to find a way around this. So I'm asking you, which midfielders do you want? Because we know we need centre-backs. I'm not taking away from that, by the way. This isn't me going, oh, we don't need what we needed before in January and we just need a midfielder. I genuinely think in, in January now, whether it's feasible or not, is a different conversation. I genuinely think what we need is a centre-half, a centre-mid and a forward. I think we look lacklustre up front. I don't think you can rely on Sonny consistently. I think he, he's brilliant in purple patches. I think you need another forward that offers you something different to what he offers you. Sonny, we know, is good at getting in behind. I think you need another forward with another dynamic, whether it's brilliant hold-up play, whether it's power in the air, whether it's a fox in the box. I think you've got to have someone to complement Son. We know we need a centre-half. Van der Ven and Romero aside, the, the centre-half options of Davis, Romero, uh, sorry, Davis, Royale, Dyer. These are appalling options, appalling. So which midfielders do you want to buy? We've we've had links to many midfielders in the, in the last six months, haven't we? We've had the two lads that play at Real Sociedad in terms of um, Zubamendi. And Mikel Marino, two brilliant central midfielders. But Real Sociedad having a good year in the league, having a good year in the Champions League. Would they let them go? Are they feasible? People have talked about Hatata at um, Celtic, Matt O'Reilly at Celtic. They're out the Champions League. Could you get them from Celtic? No offence to Celtic, but I'd love to think that Spurs are capable of going to get players from Celtic. No offence. I just think we're capable of that. Good players, by the way. Matt O'Reilly, big, strong, powerful, good on the ball, scores some goals, likes to create. Hatata with the engine, the dynamism. Any other midfielders that you think you would like to see come into the Spurs team? There's loads out there. We could run through hundreds. But I think we would all agree something needs to happen. And what does this mean for Pierre Hoybier now? What does this mean? Atletico Madrid wanted him and he wanted out. He's been a bit part player so far this season. But the, all the reports today suggesting that we're going to have to keep him now because of these injuries and suspensions, which makes sense. But what does that mean? Does that mean that because you can't get rid of Hoybier now that someone else can't come in? Do you get rid of Skip and someone else comes in? What does that then mean for the homegrown quota with Ollie Skip? So it's concerning, but interesting, but intriguing. What have the Spurs scouts and the new Spurs setup got in store? Does anyone think we'll just go with what we've got till the end of the year and we won't, maybe won't do anything in January? Let me know. Questions I'm going to ask you. How does the Benton core injury affect us for the rest of the season? Him coming out and someone like Hoybier going in changes the dynamic, whether it's Hoybier, Skips, the Celso, none of them are as good as Benton core. Who do you buy? What does it change? Does it change our league position? Let me know, people. Never a dull day at Tottenham. What else is around the corner? 
Much love, everyone. See you tonight for another live Champions League score show where we just have a bit of a laugh, bit of a chill. Nothing's too serious. We'll see you for that. Please like, please subscribe. And we are 31 away from 12K. And we are giving away a shirt, a football shirt, when we get to 12K. So 31 to go. Please like, please smash that subscribe button. Take care, everyone. And as always, come on, you Spurs.